Hello friends, welcome to our website automationcommunity.com. Today we are going to see a very interesting topic which is flow measurement using proximity sensor. From industrial point of view also, this is very important topic. So let us begin. Before understanding the programming, we need to understand how proximity sensor will sense the flow. So let us understand this diagram. Assume that this is one pipe in which we have mounted a turbine and proximity sensor. Now if the fluid will flow from here, this turbine will rotate and assume that this turbine is made up of metal material. So as soon as it will pass through this sensor, it will generate one pulse. So in this way, the flow is converted into number of pulses. So in later part of this PPT, I will explain you how we will convert these pulses into flow. So in this example, I have created one simple HMI screen where because we don't have hardware proximity sensor. So I have created one momentary button in HMI through which I will click through mouse and give input to our PLC program. And also I have created one numeric display which will display our output flow in liters per minute. So this is all done through a mathematical code that we will write in later programming. So let us start. Before that we need to understand uh, what will be the wiring uh, required for this project. So HMI will be connected to PLC through RS485 or COM port communication. Similarly, here for the proximity sensor, we have taken standard color code which is used in industries. So, first of all, we have to give supply to this proximity sensor. So, as per the industrial uh, standards, brown wire is used for 24 volt positive supply. Blue wire of the proximity is used for ground supply that we are giving through this direct from here. And its black wire is its output. And here we will consider a PNP type. So as you can see, this is output and here it is giving output to X0, which is connected to internally sourcing, which is connected to ground. So basically we are giving this output to X0 as soon as there will power from here and ground we have provided from sourcing. So this X0 will turn on and it will give pulses to this PLC. So this was the basic uh, diagram. As per your application, you can connect other inputs and outputs over here. So for our project, this is enough. Now uh, let us move to the logic part. So first of all, what we will do, we will measure the number of pulses for a known duration of time. Let us say two seconds. Okay. Now I will measure the pulses for two seconds. Then what I will do, I will multiply this number of pulses with 30. Why 30? Because we want to convert this in per minute. So in one minute there are 60 seconds and so we want to know number of pulses in 60 seconds. So what I will do? If I multiply 30 with 2 seconds, I will get 60 seconds. Similarly, if I am getting 4 pulses in 2 seconds and if I multiply this with 30, what I will get? 120. So now we can know that in one minute there will be 120 pulses. Okay. After that, what I will do? I will divide by number of pulses for one liter. Okay. Let us say my number of pulses for one liter per minute flow is 10. So if I divide this result, that is 4 multiplied by 30, that is 120. And if I divide that 120 by 10, what I will get? I will get flow in liters per minute. Now, now the thing is how I get this value by 10 only. So here there is an assumption. What is the assumption? First of all, we have to take one standard meter and along with that we have to connect over this proximity sensor arrangement. Okay. Then what we will do? We will start a flow in which in the standard meter, let us say there is 5 liters per minute flow. And here we will count the number of pulses for 5 liters. And then we will divide the number of pulses with 5. We will get 
number of pulses in one liter. So let us say here we have assumed for the flow of one liter per minute we are getting ten pulses. So this is just an assumption, okay? So here this is we get this value by this assumption, okay? In practical case, as I told you, we have to connect one standard meter in series with our this meter. Then whatever flow we are getting during that we will count the pulses and divide. For example, if we are getting five liters per minute, then we will divide the number total number of pulses with with five, and we will get number of pulses in one liter. So here ten is the number of pulses in one liter. So during this ladder programming, we will consider the number of pulses per liter is equals to ten. Okay. In actual case, it can vary. So, without wasting a time, let us see how we are going to do these things in ladder programming. So, let us start our ISP soft software from here. Now, let us open from here. We click on the new file and uh, let us write the name of our project and click OK. So, now it is created. Let us write the device command. X0 is our input sensor. Then T0 is our counter. And uh, in the D8, that is our the final flow in LPM. And D0 is our uh, where we will store our basic counting. So, number of pulses, let us write. Okay, and then click on program, right click on it, click on new, and click OK. So let us maximize this and zoom it from here. So our first network is to count the number of pulses. So for that, what we will do, we have to insert NO contact of X0. Okay. Then we will write mnemonics of counter that is CNT. Okay. Then we will write the counter number C0. Now, here what we'll have to write the maximum value that will occur in the two seconds period. So, I assume that in my case, the number of pulses in two seconds will not be more than 50, 60, or 100. So, let us select 100 over here. Okay. Because in the 2 seconds, my number of pulses are never going to be more than 100. And after the 2 seconds, I am going to reset the counter. So, it will become 0. Now, insert a new network from here. And here, now what we will do, we have to start one timer. That is starting every 2 seconds automatically. So, first of all, we have to insert here, right, timer only. So, here we have to insert always on contact that is LD M1000 LD means insert contact okay so this is normally on and by this we will turn on one timer so I will write mnemonics of timer from keypad that is TMR then timer number T0 and as I told you earlier we are going to count for 2 seconds so here I will write 20 because this is 100 millisecond timer so 20 is considered as 2 seconds. Again, insert a network. As the 2 seconds are completed, so let me insert one contact. Okay. First of all, we will write network comment over here. Move pulse in data register D0 and reset counter. Okay, so that it can count another value. So when we want to move data that is when the timing is completed first of all we have to move data so i will just write mov from here then what we want to move we want to move c0 in d0 okay, okay. here we have to write d0 what else we want to do we want to reset this counter so again insert or just write RST from here. RST means reset mnemonics and C0. And also we want to reset the timer. Okay. So reset 
T0. So when the timing is completed, what is going to happen? The value of counter is going to move in B0 and counter and timer will be resetted. So it can start from beginning. So it was about getting the pulses from sensor. Now what is the next part? We have to do mathematical operations on this number of pulses. So I will just write multiplication over here. LD M1000 means always on contact. Now what we want to do? We want to do convert this number of pulses into pulses in 60 seconds. So as told in the logic, we have to multiply this number of pulses that is stored in D0 with 30. And then we have to store it in D4. So okay, my instruction is written. Again, insert new network. Here I will write convert in LPM and uh, what how we will do that just by using division block so again i will use ld1000 that is always on contact and here i will write double divide d4 that is multiplied over here okay that you can okay let first of all we want to divide it by 10 that i have told you earlier what is the meaning of 10 here and uh, I will store this result in D8. Okay. So first of all, the number of pulses in two seconds is coming over here. Then we'll multiply with 30. So D4 is the number of pulses in 60 seconds. Now number of pulses in 60 seconds is divided by the number of pulses in one liter. So what we will get later in four minutes. Okay. So here it is a short and simple code of this logic. Right now. In this video only, we are going to simulate this. So for that, I need one simple HMI screen. So let us quickly create that. So quickly, let us click on the new file and select any basic screen size and write the name of your project and click on the next. Don't forget to do this communication settings. Here, either you have to select your PLC or your simulator that you have created in ComGR. Otherwise, Simulation will not work and click on finish. So very quickly, we have to insert one momentary button over here. So that I will insert like this. You can go to buttons, select momentary and then you can draw like this. Okay. Let me delete this. I will double click over here and simply you have to write the address. So our address is X0 only and click enter. You can change its shape from here and uh, let us say for off condition it is red and for on condition it will look like green okay and the button is created similarly here we want to show our flow in numeric display so we will use one data display that is numeric display and draw a box like this double click over it to change its color from here background color and you can also change it border color from here change its shape increase its font from here and most important thing is the address so we want to show the value of d8 register so don't forget this and click ok now simply we will add the text to this so this is our input sensor so in the text i will write let us increase its size and make it bold click ok let us copy paste this only for here and this is showing our flow in lpm click ok so our hmi is designing is completed let us minimize this and we have to start our comgr so that we can open from here and start our simulator i have already started it from here start now we need to compile this from here compilation is complete let us download this to our simulator click on transfer and close this
Now we will click on online button and don't forget to turn on this bit for simulation. Okay, I have disabled it. I have to enable this. Now click on run button, confirm yes. Okay, so again open your HMI and click on offline simulation. So this is our screen loaded. So here you can see counter value is zero. Timer is every two seconds it is resetting and again starting okay automatically because we have used this always on bit. So it is again started. Now as soon as I will press here, you can see counter value will increase. So after two seconds it will display over here. So if I press it like this, okay, let us see where is the problem. So I think we have to take this block over here. So let us close this and modify our logic like this. Let us stop this and click offline. So it may be possible that priority of ladder diagram is top to bottom. So first of all, we have to take this block over here. So how we can do that? Just delete this. Okay. And now again click over here and I will write reset C0. So again it is coming over here. So let us delete this first. Now I will write reset timer and now here I will write move C0 to D0. Okay, so now it come forward. Let us check this whether it is working or not. Click on online button and run button. Again, let us click on the offline simulation from here. So this time, I hope it should work. Let us check directly from here. So now you can see our data is moving to D0 register. That is because there is a priority in the ladder programming. Ladder programming priority is from left to right and top to bottom. So this was just a little mistake. Now we will check our simulator. Faster, I will click over here. More will be the flow that you can see from here. And then if I slowly click it, flow will reduce. Okay, so if the flow is less, turbine will rotate less, so there will be less number of pulses. Okay, and if I flow will be more, turbine will rotate faster, so there will be more number of pulses. So it will show flow like this. And if I stop this, if I stop clicking pulses, you can see flow is zero. So here it is doing its mathematical operation that you can see. So 90 that you can see in the D4, okay, that is the number of pulses in one minute. And here, what we are getting, we are dividing total number of pulses with the known number of pulses for one liter flow. So the result that we are getting in D8 register that is displaying on the HMI screen. So if D8 is 15, it is showing 15, okay. So this is our simple but useful application of flow measurement using proximity. In the same way you can display RPM of machine that is revolutions per minute. But for that this mathematical steps will be little bit different. Okay. So from proximity sensor only we can measure RPM or flow. So if you want to learn more real life examples like this, show your interest by liking and subscribing our YouTube channel. Meet you in the next video with another important topic.